Okay, Cleshwood Predator back at last on YouTube uh, after a busy time in real life. So I've got tons and tons of content um, on its way. And um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start the um, the stream of content. I've got heaps of videos to do. Uh, I'm going to start with um, Feng Chan because um, Feng Chan. Look, one of the key questions everyone must be asking is. How can Feng Chan do 19 three stars on top clans? So what I'm going to um, look at in this um, initial series of videos, because I've got a lot of content to do, is um, what are the strategies they're using and how are they pulling it off? And what are the base weaknesses they're exploiting um, to get their three stars? You'll also notice um, they've got some just insane strategies. So um, I've got some five lava raids and all sorts of stuff like that on its way. Um, so um, uh, follow the videos. There's some really um, great stuff coming. Now, um, the other thing I've been doing a lot of um, uh, while I've been away from um, doing YouTube videos is I've been doing a lot as, of analysis, understanding um, why the attacks and defences are, are working and aren't working. So you'll notice um, in a lot of the video commentary, I'll, I'll quote a lot, a lot more on the way of statistics and explain. What I'm trying to do is explain um, the why of why attacks are working and why attacks are not working and what and, and likewise on defense so you can um, then use the why to apply that to your own pace and hopefully it works now this first attack I've got here for, is from Mike Chen on Yangi from MK, MKMA so let's um, have a look at the raid and analyze some of the details actually firstly let's have a look at the base um, so what we've got here is a base um, with the king and queen the opposite side now this is um, the first issue um, with this base is the fact that the king isn't really protecting the queen because um, when you look at a base you know often you'll see people putting a lot of high hit point buildings and protecting the key bits of the hybrid the queen and the infernos now but with this base you've got the town hall here and the king here now the king is effectively a town hall it's almost 5,000 hit points um, at level 40 uh, and what the, what they're going to do here is they will attack the base opposite side of the town hall and the king and that way they don't have to deal with um, those two those two buildings. Now, the, the reasons why the, the Town Hall and the King are so critical in defence placement, um, a, queen, a, a Max Queen takes 12 shots um, when not under cloak um, to take down the Town Hall, 11 for the King. Uh, you know, so there is there is effectively, you know, I think it's 0.75 seconds a shot. So you've got look at basically nine seconds to take down either the Town Hall or the King. Um, when when the queen's not under cloak, um, so they're hugely um, powerful um, in terms of being a shield. But this base um, has them sort of both placed this side. So the obvious point to hit is over here, where you don't have to deal with these these huge tanks um, in terms of the queen getting past. Um, second thing about this base um, in terms of defensive weaknesses um, is look at the queen um, walk path. So the queen will walk around here. Jump a wall here, jump a wall here, and then for a couple of seconds be on the wall over here. Now what that means is if you attack this base and put a jump here, you basically opened up the queen um, pocket and the queen's accessible to the king, very unlikely to be the other side of a wall. So that queen is quite exposed because of that wall configuration. Um, and if you look at the queen walk path, I like to have the queen jumping lots and lots of walls. Um, uh, and in this case, the queen's only going to be jumping this wall over here for a couple of seconds, in which case um, it's pretty easy to get access to the queen if you just place a jump here. If the queen's in this pocket or this pocket, the king will rush to the queen and you can kill the queen pretty easily. Now, the third thing about um, this base, which I'll just touch on, you'll notice it's quite spread. And lots and lots of spaces, and and this is probably a better correction to my lava loon defense guide because I think when I when I first did the lava loon defense guide, I was thinking, look, it's probably best to, to run the loons around the base and make them um, travel as much distance as you can. Um, on looking at how um, I've been looking deeply into hybrid defense, and the trouble with spreading out your defense is that you just don't put enough damage per second on the golems and the hybrid as the, through the hybrid stage and so by spreading out the defense you'll find that often your defense buildings are putting you know um, 300 damage per second on on your hybrid whereas you really want to see um, the damage on your golems in the hybrid stage up at 400 dps um, and if it's up at 400 dps it's pretty hard to pull off a hybrid um, so here um, when you we will watch this replay the actual um, from the defense buildings the average DPS on the golems was um, 310 per second, um, and 
as a result of that, the golem survived 43 seconds. Um, then the king lasts another 14 after that. And so the queen actually gets um, just over 70 seconds into the raid to complete the hybrid. And that's why this um, base works. So, uh, so, so, so why this raid three stars. So you've got three issues with this base. One, nice accessible queen in terms of the, the wall configuration. The second is um, the queen from this side is just unprotected in terms of the really high hit point buildings, the king and the town hall, um, you know, even the D store. Um, the really high, high hit point buildings are on this far side of the base, which leaves the queen a bit exposed. And the third is because the um, defenses are quite spread out, um, therefore, there's not enough DP damage per second put on the golems through the hybrid. Therefore, the hybrid goes a long time and therefore the queen can take out a lot of the base. Um, so let's have a look at the um, replay. So, so um, drops the um, drops one golem, and this is this is clever. So this is about um, you'll see a lot of skills in these Feng Chan replays. So just drops one golem. That golem is under um, what's that? A hundred. Um, it might get some splash there. So maybe a, a roughly 160 DP, DPS at this stage. Didn't drop two golems because no point in dropping another golem and having it suffer damage because at the moment the queen can pick up one, two, three buildings before dropping the second golem and that therefore um, at the moment the hybrid's only copying um, what's that, 160 damage per second. You need to be running at, you know, in my view, over 400 and therefore, you know, a good start to the raid because a couple of free buildings are on offer. Then um, takes out the second buildings, drops the golem. Now, this, now, um, if you look at the hybrid, is now under um, one, two, three hundred, four hundred and fifty damage per second. But had a, had a whole period there where it was just one sixty, and that helps the raid. That helps the golems live a lot longer, and that makes the hybrid more chance of success. Okay, the next thing I want to look at is I want to have a look at this um, this this critical bit of the raid, which is the wall breaker drop. Now, look at the um, the skill and the planning here. Um, so you've got two golems, right? And now if you break the wall over here, there's a chance that that golem might not come around. Um, you know, it's focused on the cannon and, you know, then it might, you know, retarget. It's a, it's a long way away to walk around. If, if the pocket breaks here, there's a chance that this golem might um, not come around. So what is, what is what's critical to this raid is dropping the wall breakers so it breaks the wall in between these two golems. Now have a look at this piece of skill. Um, one is, um, if that mortar was still up, those wall breakers go straight to where the defense is and bust the wall here, probably on the corner where there's um, damage already done on that wall. And this golem comes through, this golem doesn't. Um, if, um, say, um, the queen takes down the mortar and then takes down the wizard tower, um, then you'll find that the wall breakers um, will either target here where the cannon is, or depending on this, maybe they target this wall you know, where the archer tower is, um, but they're not going to go for here. Um, so the, the key here is, in terms of the timing, he's dropped his wall breakers just at the right time um, between when the mortar's gone down and when the queen takes down the um, whiz tower. And the whiz tower, I think, takes, I think it takes three queen, queen shots. So he's only got, uh, was it 2.25 seconds to drop those wall breakers at the right spot and then they'll target through to break the wall in the middle and then both golems will come through. It's a great piece of skill there. Um, but critical to the raid because if only one golem comes through, then you're in a bit of trouble. Um, but it just shows you the detail you've got to um, go to in planning these raids. So he's dropped the wall breakers exactly at the right time. They've passed through in the middle, broken the wall, and now um, this golem routes through. And this golem, once that te Tesla's gone down, um, this golem routes through and critical to the raid in terms of its success. Now um, you'll see here that the jump has been dropped. Um, in one of the two pockets where the queen spends most of its time. So now the queen is definitely accessible um, uh, in terms of the, the raid. Um, and that's, you know, again, as I mentioned before, a bit of a base weakness. Golems come through, queen knocking down buildings. Now he's dropped his king, interestingly, 41 seconds into the raid. So he, he's using his king, and this is, you know, a really good piece of strategy. He protects his king uh, and use, he's using his king purely as something to kill the queen. Um, and then um, yeah, I hope the golems, even if the golems have gone down, the king will be relatively high health and provide the queen more protection through the back half of the raid. So here you can see that the CCs come through. Um, it attacks the golems. He zaps the CC. Now this is interesting. Um, the CC, this guy was running on this raid, you can't really see it here. Uh, he ran a witch, 
three wizards, uh, what was it? Um, uh, three m minions and the rest archers. I think there's five archers. Now the actual CC only managed to do, I estimate about 2000 hit points of damage. Um, didn't get a lot of value from the CC, so you do wonder about, um, I think one of the thing, one of the real defense levers is having a look at your CC composition and have a look at how effective it is in putting on damage on the attack. If you're only doing 2000 points of damage, personally I don't think that's enough. Um, I think you wanna be, you know, having your CC do you know, 4,000 points of damage, allowing for splash and the like, and he only does 2,000 points of damage with his splash here. Um, his queen does very well. His queen survives for nine seconds out on the golem and so puts on about just under 4,000 of damage. So good for the defense, but the CC didn't get particularly good value for. And there's actually something funny here, actually. If you look very closely, you'll see that one of these wizards um, goes through here, jumps the wall and targets and gets shot in the air by the queen. But uh, what I'm... Uh, anyway, that was just amusing, but the... Um, didn't get a lot of value from his CC there, only 2,000 points of damage, and that sort of um, means that the hybrid lasts for longer. So you can see here the queen has, the king has killed the queen, and has still got lots and lots of health. The king survives um, 14 seconds, takes a lot of fire off the queen, and the queen sort of plugs through and finally sort of takes down the inferno. Now there's um, a point worth noting in terms of skills on the queen ability there. Let me just go back a bit. Look at when he uses his queen ability. So um, the queen um, isn't under much fire, but he uses the queen ability when he's going to be hitting really high hit point buildings rather than low hit point buildings. And the, the reason for that is when you're using your queen ability, your damage output is around about um, 1,200 um, um, uh, DPS. Um, or around about, or I think it's about 900 per shot. If you've got the queen using those shots on, you know, 450 hit point buildings, 500 hit point buildings, you're burning half of your um, cloak ability. You really want to use your cloak when the cloak, um, when the queen is hitting the highest hit point buildings possible. Usually late in the attack, and you'll notice here in terms of skills, he used the cloak when using when hitting. Let's have a look. So he used the cloak just before he hit the elixir store and this elixir store. So gets good value for his cloak because he uses the cloak ability to hit really high hit point buildings and therefore he's not burning damage. But as you can see, his queen just makes the hybrid, only made it by two seconds, uh, and sort of that's sort of the hybrid state. So, okay, what are the key takeaways from that hybrid stage? One is you really need to look at your, um, your king position, you know, and your town hall position relative to the queen, um, because uh, from an attack perspective, you know, they're the, the two damage sinks as well as the DE store. Um, so if you can attack from an angle which doesn't have those things, you're more likely to succeed in your raid. Um, the second is in terms of the queen position and the queen walls. So try and place your jump where you're going to get access to your queen regardless of which pocket your queen is in. And from a defense perspective, make your queen jump lots of walls and, and make it difficult to actually pick which uh, open up all the pockets that the queen could possibly be in. Um, in terms of um, making her available to be hit. And the third uh, um, thing is in terms of defense, uh, in terms of attack, look for sp spread bases. In terms of defense, um, try not to spread your defense too much because like in this raid, um, the, um, the actual defense buildings, putting, ignoring the queen, ignoring the CZ, only did an average of 310 um, uh, point, damage points per second. And because of that, the um, golems lasted 43 seconds with a late drop of the king, another 14 seconds of protection with the um, king surviving after the queen. And so effectively, um, the queen had 57 seconds of cover um, because the base was too spread out. Um, if, whereas if it's much more compressed, you put on a lot more damage per second. The golems don't last as long, the king doesn't last as long, and the hybrid's under more pressure. Now, um, now for the air part of the raid. So um, you can see here, um, if we go back, He's only operating with um, uh, four. Uh, he's, he's got four lavas. There's a lava and a lunar CC and 14 balloons. Um, so I find that um, with a spread out base, um, I think there's. I think it seems to work better. You know, if you have a lot of meat shield um, or sort of shield for your loons, that seems to work. But it just amazes me that you can sort of three star with just 15 balloons, but um, you can if you put enough protection around them. So you'll see here what he does is a four stage drop. So the first drop is, um, so um, you can see, drops the lava, then two and two. So 
um, quite quite quick the loon's behind. It's quite important that you don't lag your loon drop too far behind your larvas because if your larvas explode before the loons are providing them cover, then your pups don't get protection by the loons and then you have less, less pups. Um, and what can happen is you run into time. So if you're having time troubles with a lot of your bases, have a look at the timing of your larva drop relative to your loon drops. If your loons are lagging too far behind, um, your larva, your larvas pop too early. That means the pups go down to the defences, and you don't don't necessarily have enough pups to clear up your base in the time frame. So that's one of the things which is quite important is to keep your loon drops pretty pretty tight to your larva drops. Now, um, so that they, so he's done um, larva loon loon, and then larva, and I think what he's done there is got about two seconds between dropping the two sets of loons and, and the second larva. And effectively, the the first larva takes out all the bombs and the second larva is there for protection of all the balloons you're going to drop. Um, so then drops are um, two more balloons over here. So you can see on this, uh, only six balloons on this part of the base. And one of the interesting things about this, okay, he's got 15 balloons. He's actually, I think he drops um, eight balloons between here and here and seven balloons between here and here. So it's interesting that, you know, it's almost... You know, evenly spread around the base, 50% of his balloons around half the base and just under 50% of his balloons around this half the base, but quite evenly spread. Uh, and you'll find that there's actually um, seven balloon drops you know, around the base, but he's effectively evenly allocated his balloons. But you can see he's dropped four over here because he wants a bit of firepower to work the way through the inferno. And effectively, these, these balloons are dropped here. So these balloons are route through here to this inferno. Then drops another lava, clear out clear out some bombs and only two loons here. So you can see that on this half of the base, only eight balloons. It was two, two, two and two. Um, so he's effectively allocated half of his balloons for half of the base. Um, but three lavas, because he needs to protect those loons, they've got to survive a lot longer um, sort of to carry across the base. So they're sort of working their way through. And he drops, uh, a, he goes rage, freeze, and then he, he'll start a drop here where he'll drop two balloons. The balloons are out here, the lava will go through here. Then he rages and drops another two balloons, balloons here, so he's got four here. And then he, this is a really cool strategy and uh, something I think Feng, Feng were the first to do. He then drops a giant and then drops some balloons here to come through on the, the Tesla. Now, um, he's mistimed his drop there, right? Because what he really wants is all of the defenses and the whiz tower to target the giant. Um, uh, the giant's got 1,200 hit points. What's a balloon got? Uh, 400 and something. Um, you know, so a giant's a really good way of drawing the um, attack off you, uh, with the whiz tower and a lot of your attack off the balloons late in the raid. Drop one giant, it's effectively worth, you know, two and a half balloons. Can draw the fire and keep your balloons intact for the remainder of the raid. But you can see um, he's still got his lava up there, still taking a lot of fire. Lava comes through on the whiz tower, and then he's basically got the base. But the, what's remarkable here is, you know, he started with, um, you know, only 15 balloons, and at the end of the raid, he's got, oh, I think, six or seven um, balloons at the end. So it's quite, it's quite amazing, um, if, you know, with four lavas on a spread base, if you drop your lavas at your right points to protect your balloons, you can you know save most of your balloons and get through the raid. Um, really amazing raid there from Feng Chen. Um, well done, Mike Chen. Um, looking forward to more Feng Chen raids. I've got tons to go through, uh, but you can see there's amazing skills in that clan and certainly learning a lot from the raids.